You're on my place. Get the hell out of here now. I'm taking your f***ing head off. Now, you understand that, son? Uh, turn around and play change behind your back. No. Turn around and play change no, behind your back. No, get the hell off my place. Welcome back to the Civil Rights Lawyer channel. We're looking at some body cam footage from Oilton, Oklahoma, where a police officer comes onto this man's property. He's a 76-year-old veteran. He demands that the officer leave his property. The officer refuses and instead ends up using physical violence against this man. The Oilton police say it's unfortunate that the event had to take place, but they believe that this officer acted according to his training. I did some digging into the Oilton, Oklahoma Police Department. You're really not going to believe it. Or maybe you will. But before we get into the body cam footage, let's quickly do our sponsor for today, which is Incogni. You may be surprised to know how much of your private information is being collected and traded online. Being a content creator and a lawyer makes privacy ever more important to me, which is why my sponsor today is again Incogni. Incogni not only tracks down the data brokers that have your information, but they also have that information and private data removed. Incogni first partnered with me in August of 2023, and since then, I just turned it on and haven't had to do anything else. As of today, Incogni has located my private information with 182 different data brokers. To date, they have had that data deleted with 155 of these data brokers, with 27 others still in progress. This would be a difficult and lengthy process to even attempt, even with my experience and legal expertise, but I haven't had to do anything. You just set it and forget it. Incogni has done everything for me, which is great because I just don't have the time anyways. I really do use Incogni and highly recommend it. So check out Incogni using the link below or go to incogni.com civil to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan just for my viewers. Again, check out Incogni using the link below or go to incogni.com civil to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Now let's get back to the video. You're going to be the one that's going to be the one that loses, okay? Uh -huh. so you need to step back, okay? I won't be the one. Hey, I ain't stepping back to nothing. You need to step back. Sir, I'll take your damn head off. Okay. First of all, sorry for the nature of this footage. This is actually how this body cam footage was released by the Oilton Police Department. So this was the response believe it or not, to show this body cam footage. And this is how it's presented, which is in line with the um, professionalism that you will see with the Oilton Police Department. More on that later. The background here is this police sergeant was investigating after a citizen reported people with a Michigan license plate claiming to be with some company named OG&E who were selling solar panels without the required permit. Without a police department, how would you ever survive, right? And he found them at the home of 76-year-old Willard Walbridge. News on 6 interviewed Mr. Walbridge previously, and he told Sergeant Beers to leave his property, saying that the officer was out of his jurisdiction, which was just outside city limits, since he was an Oilton City Police Department police officer. But the sergeant says that he's cross-deputized and did have jurisdiction. The sergeant told the news media that he was aware he was dealing with an older citizen and that's why he asked him seven times to step back and 12 times, they counted, to turn around and place his hands behind his back. He said that ultimately he decided that he could be killed by an older citizen just like anyone else and he had to take action. You need to step back. I ain't stepping back. You're on my Not place. Us, You're on my place. Get the hell out of here now. All right. You need to step back. You understand that? You need to step back. Get the hell out of here now. You're on my place. Okay. You want to we want to go this way? Do you want to go this way? I was making contact with uh, somebody well, who was listening, and I have a uh, another suspect here that's starting to get out right. I'm probably going to have to go hands on. All right. Now, before we get any further into this, I want to make one thing clear. The Fourth Amendment protects us from unreasonable searches and seizures, and that includes our homes. In fact, our homes are the most protected place there is under the Fourth Amendment. So it's important to understand where is this taking place in relation to Mr. Walbridge's home. The press release that was put out by the Oilton Police Department gives us some information on that. He says that Sergeant Beers made contact with these people who were allegedly selling these solar panels. 
and he found them in Mr. Walbridge's driveway. Then Sergeant Beers got out of his patrol vehicle to investigate. He made contact with the two subjects as they were making their way back to their vehicle. He was speaking with these two subjects at this point while they were sitting inside of their vehicle when the homeowner started obstructing Sergeant Beers' investigation. Their own press release places this incident happening in Mr. Walbridge's driveway. So not only is it his property, it sounds like it's his driveway. I can't see how close it is to his house. There's a line somewhere at our home called the curtilage. This is from U.S. Supreme Court case law that says anywhere within the, the curtilage line, it's basically treated as the inside of our home. It could be the front porch, could be the driveway. It sort of depends on the, the facts of you know how this property is laid out. And see if you can pick up any clues about where this actually takes place and whether or not it's happening inside the curtilage or outside. Keep your hands out your pockets. Ah, you're on my place. I ain't getting my hands out of nothing. Let me, let me explain something to you, okay? I'm dealing with something totally different, okay? okay? Whether it's in the county or not in the county, it started in the city, okay? That's where we are. I'm going to be straight to did the point. You ask my, my permission. I did not have to have your permission. Place. You damn sure I do. Not. This I mean, is my I'm place. I'm going to tell you one more time to step back, okay? This is my place. Step back. I'm not stepping back. You get the hell in your truck and get out here now. Do you guys know him? Do you guys want to come try to talk to him before he goes in? What was that? Well, I'm dealing with another issue, so. You fix it? All right. An issue. All right. Turn around, place your hands like that. Turn around and place you hands. You put your hands in my. Turn around. I'm taking your fucking head off. Now, you understand that, son? I know, Seven County. Can you see drum right in? Turn around, place your hands behind your back. No. Turn around and place your no. hands behind your back. Get the hell off my place. Turn around. Stay in that car. Get the hell off my place. Turn around and place your hands behind your back. That is a lawful order. You put your hands on me. Turn around. I'm taking your head off. You understand that, sir? In their press release, the Oilton Police Department gave this explanation for what is about to happen here. Here's what they said. You'll see in the video that Sergeant Beers asked the homeowner several times to step back from him as the homeowner was showing aggression and threatened Sergeant Beers with acts of violence. Sergeant Beers asked the neighbors across the street to assist him with calming the homeowner down to de-escalate the situation before the homeowner was taken into custody, to which they refused to help. Sergeant Beers attempted to place the homeowner under arrest for obstruction and treating acts of violence, whatever that is, at which point the homeowner resisted and made additional threats of violence. Sergeant Beers let the homeowner know this was a lawful order and the subject still refused. As the homeowner is threatening Sergeant Beers and approaching him, Sergeant Beers is forced for his own safety and the possible safety of the public, of course, to physically take the homeowner into custody. I'm taking your head off. You understand that, sir? Turn around. The homeowner continued to resist, trying to strike Sergeant Beers with a fist and eventually kicking Sergeant Beers. The homeowner was eventually restrained from physically harming Sergeant Beers. Can you tell that Sergeant Beers was likely the person who wrote this? Just like the Fourth Amendment protects our home, our property, the Fourth Amendment also protects our bodies from police officers using excessive force against us. In the case of Mr. Wilbridge, the courts, in order to determine whether or not excessive force was used by a police officer, will look at generally three factors known as the Graham factors. One, the severity of the crime at issue, which in this case, the man had not been suspected of committing any crime before this encounter happened. Secondly, whether or not there's some immediate physical safety threat to any individual. Now, this man is acting in a threatening way towards this police officer. Of course, the police officer could just leave as the man is demanding to do. It's undisputed that it's his property. You can't hear the man threatening any member of the public as much as the police would like to make that case. The third factor, whether or not the suspect was evading or resisting arrest. This guy was not under arrest. He was a free citizen on his own property when this incident started. At some point, the officer says he decided to place him under arrest. There was very little warning, as we could see in the video. He just reached out and grabbed him suddenly. But at the end of the day, it is a fact-intensive inquiry by the courts, looking at the totality of the circumstances. 
but with an emphasis on those three factors. Here, we're left with the basic facts that a 76-year-old man, whether aggressive or not, was violently taken down. And if we continue the body footage, you'll see that that appears to have caused, as would be perfectly foreseeable, this elderly man to then suffer a medical issue. Turn around, place your hand behind your back. Oh, I've done it. 907 County got one fight. Turn around, place your hand behind your back. Here we get a pretty good view of where this is happening in relation to this man's home. Since his nitro is coming out of that house, that must be his home. So here we're sort of on the side of his driveway where like there's an exterior fence backing up to the public right of way. There appears to be a car parked in the driveway. That may be the people who are selling solar panels. This just hit the news two days ago, but when I did some research on the Oilton Police Department, if you just go back four months ago to when they were in the news, I was kind of shocked to see this. City of Oilton hires police chief after recent lack of patrols. And then this, Creek County City hasn't had police force in weeks. So this is a TV news report about the Oilton Police Department that just sort of disappeared. In a Fox 23 exclusive, we've learned a Creek County City hasn't had a police force now in weeks. This reporter literally walks in the police department. The place isn't secured. Nobody's there. The door was unlocked, but no one was there. We were able to see keys to police units, computers, police files, and other equipment. They, they don't have a police department at all. This was just four months ago. So apparently they had gone through like nine different police chiefs in just a few short years. This begins to explain how we ended up in the situation where we, where we are with the department defending this officer's actions, probably because that officer was writing his own defense 
in his own press release to the media. I, I don't know that for a fact, but it sure reads that way. Here are the important facts. This was a 76-year-old man. Violence was used against him on his own property after the man had asked police officers to leave. So down to the very basic constitutional law, when police officers come onto your property, they're really only allowed to engage in a knock and talk if they don't have a warrant or they don't have voluntary consent, which they clearly did not have here. A knock and talk is a consensual encounter. So if they want to come on this guy's property, especially in his driveway, they have to do it just like a Girl Scout would selling cookies. They don't have any rights greater than a Girl Scout selling cookies to remain on this guy's property unless they have a warrant. When this guy asked this officer to leave, he should have left. There was no emergency occurring thereon that would override the basic requirement for a warrant and the Fourth Amendment protections that protect our homes. An investigation about people selling solar panels without a permit is not going to qualify as an emergency or an exigency sufficient here. This was terrible police work, in my opinion. It was uh, several different Fourth Amendment violations, including excessive force, um, but also unreasonable search and seizure for remaining on this guy's property, for seizing him on his property, um, which very well could be the curtilage, in my opinion, without a warrant. So as always, thanks for watching. You can subscribe both here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. If you have a video you want me to review, please use the submission link below. Follow me on Twitter at John Bryant ESQ, especially if you're into completely unrelated history stuff. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it. I'll see you next time. Thank you.